Hey guys, my name is Loveless and we are back with Quirk Knife. Okay, so um, I'm going to still do this for a while and I'm not going to completely stop doing this. It's just that I'm not going to be able to put as many videos as I want to since I'm working, um, but I'll do as many as I can. All right, let's get into this. Stupid legs, stupid death wish. Izuku raised the handle from his hand as he jumped over burning rubble, and he'd never been so grateful for his ability to obsess over a new task because his dagger pierced the slug villain right in the eye. He cried out in pain as Izuku's hand met the familiar texture of his quirk, clawing through it desperately yet pointlessly as he tried to reach Kachan. The red eyes widened comically. D Deku? Kachan coughed as he was able to get a breath of fresh air. Izuku kept reaching, yet Kachan was always too far out of reach. Is that some sort of shitty metaphor the universe is presenting? Deku, what the hell are you doing, fucking nerd? Kachan screamed as his quirk set off more explosions, the slime beginning to fill his mouth again. Izuku didn't cry, his eyes didn't even water as his expression was cold and numb. I couldn't just watch you die, Kachan. There was a moment of silence until Kachan made a strangle noise, mostly in protest, but Izuku cut him off once more. So shut the fuck up and let me think. Izuku couldn't let his anger blind him. That would get both Kachan and himself killed. While his mind ran a hundred miles per hour, he didn't even notice. Hitoshi digging through hit the wheelbarrow of junk, sending garbage flying as he pulled out what he was searching for. Of course, he didn't know what he was searching for until he saw it. Hey, what works, works. Hitoshi's long leg carried him forward, avoiding the surrounding heroes reaching to pull him back. Izuku was still digging, thinking back to when the slug monster had him captive. He needs a distraction, just a window of opportunity to yank Kachan out. That was all. Izuku, don't say my name, the greenette hissed and spun around just to see the end of the rope being thrown his way, catching it in the last minute with his dominant hand and Hitoshi holding the other. Hitoshi ran to a nearby lamp post, looping the rope around it, gripping onto the end and his feet planted. Hopefully, Azuku would receive the memo. Azuku thinks, listing countless of things off his mind within seconds, and he looked down to his red high tops that had fallen off. Well, fuck it. Kachan's eyes were closed, dipping in and out of consciousness, and Izuku decided to go for it, picking up the shoe and slamming the toe as much force as possible into the slug villain's good eye. Good thing his short ass can reach. Izuku gripped onto the rope and held his breath, diving into the slime and slamming against the side of Kachan's body. He wrapped his leg around Kachan's torso and ignored the burning sensation of his quirk going haywire, then uh, wrapping the rope around the two of them blindly. Izuku began to pull as hard as he could, his lungs screaming for oxygen as he feels the rope being pulled from the outside as well, Hitoshi using the lamp post and pulling with all the strength he had. Just when Izuku thought he gravely fucked up, he and Kachan flew out with one last pull, tumbling to the ground. Hitoshi was over there in seconds, Izuku dragging the back of Kachan's shirt with the pool, with a purple-haired boy helping Izuku and grabbing the red fallen shoe. The three of them collapsed to the pavement as they were out of reach. Izuku tensed up when the familiar voice returned. I am here! A little fucking late, Izuku snapped at All Might, ignoring the shocked look from Mitoshi. Go and wave to the cameras or whatever you heroes made to do. Kachan looked up slowly at him, blinking blearily as the hero congratulates him for his bravery. Izuku thought he and Hitoshi were immediately chewed out like they haven't just saved a life. What was that? Kami Wood scolded. Are you crazy? Do you want to die? Izuku didn't feel like lying, and it was clear that his silence got the message across. Hitoshi bumped his side lightly, and Izuku flinched, eyes wide and awake and alert. Deku! Izuku tensed even further from the stumble to his feet, grabbing Hitoshi's arm and his own shoe taking off as the heroes called after him. Who? Why? Ah! What the fuck are we running for? 
Satoshi choked as Kachan tries to chase after them, but they were too quick, weaving through the crowd. De, the name was cut off. The name was cut off, and Kachan yelled even louder if that was possible. Izuku! Izuku stumbled. The voice sounded pained, yet it was probably his mind playing tricks on him, letting him hear what he wanted to hear. The two finally stopped in the alleyway, painting and heaving as they catch their breath. You're a fucking walnut. Were you trying to die? Azuku looked up to Hitoshi, a frantic expression growing on the emotionless boy's face. Why couldn't I say your name? Who is the angry kid? Why do you run? I have so many questions. And are you really trying to die? He was. No. He was just trying to save Kachan. That was the only reason, right? Izuku. Let's just take today off. The shorter of the two responded quietly. I'm feeling a little tired. Until she was silent for a moment and then nodded. I understand. Izuku could tell that until she had more to say, but the taller boy decided to keep his mouth shut. With hesitance, Hitoshi reached out and ruffled Izuku's unruly curls. Izuku leaned into the touch ever so slightly, Hitoshi's footsteps fading slowly. Izuku just stood there for a moment. Suddenly, the sting in his hand was becoming more apparent. He looked down, raising his hands palm up, noticing how raw and burnt the skin was, blood dripping from the wound. There must have been from Kachan's quirk. Izuku had been crying through the villain without even thinking of the consequences. Possibly the rope, the worn out rope as well. That's the thing. It was nothing new. Izuku was used to scars and burns, and not only from Kachan. Most scars are hidden, strategically placed where his mom would never discover them. And it worked. She never had known. She never would know. Azuku wiped his bloody hands on his pants, cringing when he shook his hair and some leftover slime fell out. He wondered what his mom would think right now. She would cry and hug him. She would tell him to be more careful and that he needs to protect himself. Azuku's legs moved on autopilot, unsure where he traveled until, of fucking course, I am here! Azuku isn't excited. He is, however, sleep-deprived, hungry, sad, dirty, and slightly angry, but not excited. All Might coughed and deflated into his small form. Izuku just stared at him with a numb expression. Sorry for getting in your way, Izuku mumbled. What do you mean, my boy? My boy? Oh, All Might can chew on an old shoe. You are the reason I'm able to capture the slug villain. Your act of bravery and selflessness... It inspired me. You demonstrate what it means to be a real hero. I am just pathetic. On my side. Azuku had to bite his tongue to keep his insults down. All Might babbled on some more, and Azuku fought the urge to roll his eyes. It's crazy how quickly his feelings can change towards someone quickly. My boy. All Might announced dramatically. You can be a hero. What did All Might want from him? Was he expecting Izuku to fall to his knees, bursting into tears, and thanking him profusely? Izuku recalled the way that Utoshi jumped in to help. He didn't even use a quirk. No, his intelligence and instincts were the reason Izuku and Kachan were alive. Hitoshi is a real hero. Izuku spoke before he even processed his response. I know. All Might froze. Pardon? Azuku frowned deeply, his eyebrows pierced together with anger. Because I know a quirk doesn't make the hero All Might. The hero's name tasted sour in his mouth. The thin man was hesitant. My boy, a hero needs a quirk. It's just reality, but I can give you power. You can become a hero. Even through his anger, Izuku's natural fanboy instincts kicked in, and he raised an eyebrow. All Might began his speech. Izuku listened in silently, soaking up every word he said. One for all, a quirk that can be passed down, running out of time, a successor, him. Izuku respects All Might, and that's the truth. 
The hero put his own life on the line to save others, but All Might is no longer the hero that Izuku wants to be. He wants to be his own hero. In another life, Izuku began carefully. I would have said yes without hesitation. Izuku clicked his tongue and looked, looked into the piercing blue eyes. His younger self would be screaming right now. Izuku's face kept firm. Your secret is safe with me, and good luck with finding a successor. I'm sure you'll find one soon. He walked past the frozen hero and kept his head low, a new sense of pride building in his chest. Yes, Izuku Midoriya will be a hero. His own. All Katsuki wanted to do was go straight home after the arcade, but the two extras wouldn't leave him alone, and he felt even more angry than usual. One of the extras began smoking a cigarette, and that was bad enough to push Takatsuki over the edge. Oi, I told you to stop doing that shit. Finger snickered. What? It's just for fun. The ash blonde turned around and pointed a threatening finger at the two of them. If someone catches me with you two fuck swaps, it can hinder my hero path. So put that shit away. Fingers ignored him. Just chill, dude. No one's around. I wonder if anyone found that quirk was fuck. Buried him six feet under. Boulders said confidently while the other extra laughed. He now felt like blowing these extras up. Shut up about Deku. He screamed and kicked a nearby soda bottle into the brick building. Turning back to around to face the two. Stop fucking talking about him. It's annoying as shit. The moron's eyes grew comically wide as Katsuki thought maybe he got through to them. Maybe they'll finally shut the fuck up until a shadow grew over him. The extras immediately took off as the green goop attached itself to Katsuki. You'll make a fine skin suit, yes. Out of pure impulse and instinct, Katsuki fired up his quirk and began aiming at the slime but it didn't hinder the villain whatsoever and the sludge began to enter his mouth. He tried to press his lips tightly together, but it traveled through his nostrils. Access to his oxygen immediately stripped from him. No matter what he did, Katsuki couldn't take a breath, couldn't fight the villain. Has he always been this weak? Katsuki continued to fire off his quirk uncontrollably while several things erupted into flames. He spat out curses and swears, whatever he could, directing at the mass slug. Civilians gathered around. No one helped. Police gathered around. No one helped. Heroes gathered around. No one helped. No one was helping. Katsuki screamed for help, but it was muffled through the obstruction in his throat. Was he really going to die? He had so much to do still, so many people to save, so many villains to beat up. Heat built up behind Katsuki's eyes, despite his own will wanting to seem unfazed, but he couldn't help the wetness to roll down his cheeks. Katsuki looked around for anything, anyone that could help, and his eyes were drawn to a color, green. He held eye contact with that dull green eyes, grew bright once again. Katsuki was closer to death than he thought because he could have sworn that that was... No, that's impossible, right? The familiar boy was suddenly running towards him, yanking something from his pocket. Holy mother of fucks and shit, is that a knife? The boy whipped the dagger confidently and Katsuki braced himself to be stabbed, but the sharp pain never came. Instead, the villain cried out, and the freckle filled his vision. It couldn't be. Yet the name tumbled out from Katsuki's lips as he was able to inhale a deep breath while the slug villain screams, De Deku! The boy? Deku. He didn't respond, his small hands frantically digging through the slime, his fingers grazing Katsuki several times. Deku! Katsuki snapped back. What the hell are you doing, fucking nerd? Deku's face was focused and unnerving. It made a chill run down Katsuki's spine. I couldn't just watch you die, Kachan. Katsuki tried to respond, but the slime began to fill his throat again, and Deku screamed. So shut the fuck up and let me think. Fuck, maybe this wasn't Deku? Katsuki couldn't see straight anymore, no matter how much he tried. He was 
what he was about to what he was about to see though was Deku picking up something an object from the ground. It was red, dirty, white, laced, a shoe, a red high top. It really was Deku. Katsuki tried to shout his name, but he couldn't get anything out. Izuku! He heard someone cry, but his vision and hearing grew too fuzzy to pick out anything else. Suddenly, a body slammed into Katsuki and thin legs wrapped around his waist, following by something else. A rope, perhaps? Just when Katsuki thought he couldn't hold out any longer, he tripped onto the pavement, Deku tumbling over him. The voices around him were blurry. Could have sworn Deku just cursed at fucking All Might. Right, he must have actually a fucking died. Shit. That is, until his head lulled to the side to see Kami Woods scolding Deku and the other extra. Do you want to die? Deku fell silent and the atmosphere surrounding him almost made Katsuki throw up. Deku! He screamed. Ignoring the heroes trying to talk to him, Deku's head snapped Deku's head snapped in his direction, his eyes growing wide. Grabbing the taller boy, taking off running, Katsuki stumbled up trying to follow them through the crowd. Fuck. Since when was Deku faster than him? De Katsuki cut himself off in the moment of panic. He screeched despite his rawness in his throat. Izuku Deku was gone. Katsuki felt like he was genuinely going crazy. He made his way home. There was no way that wasn't Deku. Sure, his hair was longer and he seemed kind of sick, but there's no way those eyes belonged to anyone else. On the other hand, Deku didn't cry the whole time. The Deku Katsuki knew would have burst into tears under that sort of fucking pressure. And what was with the avoiding the death question from the pro hero? Deku was never suicidal or anything. At least that's not what Katsuki convinced himself was true. Katsuki pushed the front door open more gently than usual and didn't bother calling out that he was home, but was startled when both of his parents came burling out of the kitchen. Katsuki! His mother shouted. The police called and the villain attacked and oh my god, thank Kami you're okay. Katsuki couldn't even bother to hide the shock on his face where his parents were concerned for him. Are you alright? Dad asked. You must have been so brave. Whatever, Katsuki murmured as his mother picked him up right off his feet into a bone-crushing hug while his dad ruffled his hair, which was still slimy. You're quiet, Mom said after a minute, gently putting him back down. His two parents surveyed him for a moment until Katsuki... Until Katsuki simply blurted out what was on his mind. I saw Deku. Mom's eyebrows rose, but her expression completely changed to sadness and pity. Cats, she mumbled, leading him to the kitchen. Are you... Are you sure? Katsuki's palms popped slightly. Of course I'm fucking sure. I know what that stupid Deku looks like. Mom frowned at the harsh words, but let it slide. Hun, she spoke carefully. I hate to say this, but you are probably seeing things. I'm sure you were under some stress, and if Izuku was really there, I'm sure the officers or heroes would have reported it. Katsuki opened his mouth to argue in return, but faltered at that sudden statement. Why hadn't anyone reported Deku? The heroes and the cops got a good look at him, and surely someone would have recognized a missing child, no matter how plain looking. Maybe Katsuki was making a mistake, but no, no, it was Deku. Green curly hair, green eyes, freckles, he looked a little different, but I'm sure. And he was with another boy. He called him Zuku. He was tall with purple weird fucking hair, and he looked really tired looking and... Katsuki Bakugo. The woman sighed heavily and sat down next to him at the kitchen table. Baby, maybe you should talk to someone about this. Katsuki nodded. You're right. I should have called the shitty police and let them... No, Kats. Your father and I have been talking about it for quite some time, actually. But maybe, you know, some therapy? Katsuki's red eyes flickered back and forth between his parents. 
Then his expression quickly soured and slammed a fist against the table. I don't need that shit. Dad frowned and tapped his fingers against his mug. You might think that, but it could help. I don't need help. Kotsky cried, noticing his voice sounded strangely close to a whine. Kami, he kind of sounds like Deku. Why? What's so bad about it? Mom asked, with a smug smile stretched across her face. Are you scared or something? Kotsky scoffed and crossed his arms. Him? The Kotsky Bakugo? Scared? Ha! No fucking way. Seriously, Mom added. Katsuki felt sweat build up in his brow where they really were planning to send him to see a shrink. Why does he feel so frantic and angry? Deku frowned at the scrapes at Katsuki's knees. Don't worry, Kachan. Hey, Deku carefully opened the band-aids with his tongue sticking out of his teeth, applying it to his knees with sturdy hands. Are you okay, Kachan? Katsuki just scowled. I'm fine, Deku. Bakugo, no, he's mean. He'll never be a hero. Katsuki was prepared to just ignore the extras, but Deku spun around with a large frown. Don't say that. Kachan will be the best hero, just like All Might. Shut up, Deku. Katsuki snapped quietly, and Deku flinched, but got back up to play. A weak, stupid, quirkless Deku. Leave him alone, Kachan. I won't let you hurt him. Deku stood his ground between Kotsky and the child he was practicing his quirk on. Get out of the way, shitty Deku. Tears spilling down his face. He held his hands up. No, Kachan, stop. Deku, get this through your thick skull. Kotsky sneered, holding one of the stupid hero journals between his hands. You'll never be a hero. Kotsky blew up the journal. The smell of burning fabric and flesh assaulted his nose while he laughed. Deku withered beneath him, yet for the first time he didn't seem to scream or cry. Strange. Deku. Kotsky sneered. Leave the oxygen for those who need it. If you want to be a hero, hope for a quirk in your next life and take a swan dive off the roof. Deku stared at him with empty eyes and blinked, slowly walking past him. These days were like that. Deku's expression was always the same. Azuku's missing, Katsuki. Katsuki done something bad, hasn't he? Was this the hero he really wanted to be? So his mom asked him if he was afraid as a form of manipulating him into agreeing to the therapy. He didn't need to be manipulated at all, because that was the truth. Kotsky was afraid of himself. Ooh, finally got to the end of this chapter. Yay. Um, this is so good. I love it. There is some literal character development going on or going to happen. I, I love it. And it's kind of a little bit canon with the, his development being slow. Oh yeah, but if you want to see more of this or hear it, you know what to do.